on live stream as well as those who are here with us in the public gallery. Mr. Speaker, I rise to uh, present my contribution to the appropriation bill before this House of Representatives. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Strategic Planning, National Development and Statistics for delivering a coordinated, well-planned and inclusive 2023-2024 budget to support the economic recovery in contributing to rebuilding our future together. Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge the uh, Deputy Prime Minister's team uh, at the Ministry of Finance for a careful, transparent, very consultative and effective approach in uh, managing the public purse since the coalition government took over on the 24th of December 2022. The budget now before the House is more realistic, it is prudent and deserving of all of our support in rebuilding our island home of Fiji together on the foundation of unity, bipartisanship and mutual collaboration. On the outset of this budget debate, Mr. Speaker, I wish to acknowledge the support as well as the guidance of all of those who have made it possible for me to continue to discharge my responsibility as the Minister responsible for lands and mineral resources for the past six months. Permanent Secretary, Deputy Secretary, Directors, Managers and all the staff who have put together our request to the Ministry of Finance and my Parliament team who I'm sure are locked onto the screen Thank you for a job well done. Mr. Speaker, this will be the first of many budgets that will be presented to the House by the coalition government, and I say of many budgets in the future. There will be many to follow in years to come. In other words, Mr. Speaker, the People's Coalition Government is here to stay for a very long time. It is here to stay for a number of reasons. We are here to correct the historical, woeful economic policies that we have inherited from the Fiji First Government for the past eight years and eight years before that in its interim military government form. We are also here to correct the short-sighted and ineffective physical and monetary policies that has led the country to a humongous national debt level that now needs to be paid. We are paying off $1 billion of Fiji First Government debt, even in our first year in office. Mr. Speaker, the opposition appears to have very short memory, alleging that we are responsible for raising the debt level to beyond $10 billion. What they don't appear to accept is that they were responsible for the increase of that national debt from around $2.8 billion in 2006 to approximately more than $9 billion in 2022. Yes. Mr. Speaker, it is the height, the height of blankness to all of a sudden allege the coalition government of high deficit in its first ever budget of over 600 million, when they have lived on high borrowing and high deficits in all these years between 2007 and 2022. Someone said on social media, when the Honorable Leader of Opposition labeled us on Monday as um, drunkards, Spending like drunkards in the nightclub, you recited him. He said, well, if that was true of us now, they were spending like druggies. And might I add, in open daylight, Mr. Speaker. 15%, Mr. Speaker, is not new to Fiji. Certainly, it isn't new to Fiji First Party. 
They introduced it. It was their legacy, Mr. Speaker, between 2011 to 2015. <laughs> 15% VET. Why? Why? It was necessary to do so at that time to lift our country's revenue earning. That was your reasoning. Everything is linked to everything else. Rings a bell? 2016 was when they reduced 15% to 9% VET. And of course, Mr. Speaker, we all knew that the reduction of VET was driven by politics, was not driven by economics. In 2022, the Fiji First Government placed a three-tier VET, zero rated on 21 items, 9% and 15% on other items. We now will have only two-tier program, which will only have an overall effect of 3% more as opposed to the increased social protection program and funding that actually puts more money in the pockets of ordinary Fijians than anything else whose buying wish list is only within the 22 items that are zero rated. In addition, the government is reducing duty on consumable goods that will provide relief on affordability for all Fijians. Mr. Speaker, the populist Fiji First Government policies of the past has affected the revenue potential of government to get more in order to deliver or improve service delivery to the people all these years. Instead of relying on heavy borrowing that we have now inherited and now will have to pay. On their behalf and on the weight of those response, irresponsible policies now shoulder on the on the shoulders of the ordinary Fijians. For this, Mr. Speaker, the old adage that warns people who point finger like the opposition have been doing for this week. When you point one finger, remember four are pointing back at you. Take responsibility for the mess that you created. $506 million hole that was identified by the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister Kam Kamida in his speech. Rebate to movie companies. Rebate to oil companies. Monies that could have been better utilized in the upkeep of national infrastructure such as the roads, water, electricity grid, health and education. Excessive borrowing. <laughs> That's not to suggest, Mr. Speaker, that borrowing is not right. It is what you do with it and how you spend it that is more important. And we all know, Mr. Speaker, from the Fiji First Government record, they score a big fail in that scorecard. They harp about institutional interference and constitutional violations. <laughs> Take a long, hard look in the mirror, honorable members. You have the worst record of interference since 2006. Nepotism. Take a long, hard look in the mirror, honorable members. When you point one finger at us, four pointing back at you. How do you explain? How do you explain? Linan in Suva taken to Nandi for washing and to be returned back to Suva for use in the largest hospital of this country. Against all that that the opposition members have said, this is the budget, Mr. Speaker, that will set straight the path for economic recovery, bring back prudence in our financial affairs, and make Fiji a nation for all to find their feet and also to improve their lives. There is now an increased support for vulnerable and disadvantaged in the new social protection program. Increase in pension funding. We are empowering our community leaders, not just the Itoke community leaders, all communities, by increasing the allowances for them to do their work. We're returning FNPF to pre-COVID rates by 1st of January 2024. We're creating the 
Fijian scholarship scheme that will free up 53,000 students, your relatives, honorable members, your sons, your daughters, your granddaughters, your grandsons, your nephews and your nieces are going to be beneficiaries to this coalition budget. Honorable Rinesh Sharma, go and ask those who had loaned and now have their loans forgiven as to how they feel about this aspect of the government's budget. Come back to Parliament, where is he? Come back to Parliament in September and report what your findings are. You included, Honourable Ketan. We are paying, we are paying, Mr. Speaker, what is due to the USP for the sake of our children. Our commitment to pay the University of the South Pacific our dues is not tagged to any demand we have on how USP conducts its business. That is for the council, which we dominate anyway. Of course, there must be good governance, Mr. Speaker, but such concerns could have been raised and achieved by consultation and not by bulldozing tactics, such as the withdrawal of funding that the Fiji First Government did. It's a shameful thing to do. To the students of Fiji at the University of the South Pacific, we are going to ensure that not what the government owes that needs to be paid to USP will be paid for your sake. And to the people of the Nolebu. The people of Nolebu. A 200 million 10 year plan to support an integrated, resilient, and sustainable tourism development. It would look in the beginning at feasibility on infrastructure to support the development program, sustainability assessment on roads, power grid, and connectivity to complement the program in the later part of the stages of development. And so to the colleagues of mine from Nuelevu on both sides of the house, this is the answer to our look north cry for all of these years. Regrettably, Mr. Speaker, I note the Honorable Mbulitabu, my Savu Savu colleague, the Honorable Ketan Lal, Honorable Tunadeva, an adopted son of Savu Savu, and of course, the leader of our opposition. They have rejected this budget, Mr. Speaker. I've saved the Honorable Neville Rua because he's chosen night to see for his home for now. <laughs> but I ask the Honorable Members, we still have your vote to count. And so please remember your voters from Bonolevu. Vote for this budget and vote for your voters' interest. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <coughs> the Ministry of Lands and Mineral Resources has been allocated a total budget of $30.1 million. This is an increase of 6.9 million from the last financial year. So in moving forward, Mr. Speaker, the ministry will be pragmatic in its approach, delivering, finding new solutions to existing challenges faced by the ministry. With the allocated budget, the ministry will continue to ensure that we strike the right balance between the fulfillment of our role and function, support and encouragement, and encourage economic activities while ensuring that our environment and resources is sustainably protected and managed. Mr. Speaker, on the area of ease of doing business, to sustainable support the development and growth of the agricultural sector and agro-processing, the Ministry will continue to speed up the process of land accessibility. We have reviewed our processes with much focus on land accessibility, Mr. Speaker. This, of course, you would note, is evident in the, in the launch of the State Land Online Application Portal, which is transparent, efficient, and accessible to all. Lessees can now apply for state land leases without leaving the comfort of their homes, their businesses or farms, and is readily available through the Ministry's <coughs> website. Ministry will also revamp another online portal in the coming months which is the online consent application. Statelessies will be able to apply for consent through the MyList Info portal. This will enable lessees to track status of the application online and at the same time reduce turnaround time in processing application for consent in all of their land dealings. The door of creativity and innovativeness is what the ministry has been revamping on to improve and pursue 
to go digital in its processes, which I must commend. These new ministry online systems are not outsourced, Mr. Speaker, which would be costly exercise. This ministry online portal systems are developed by our own very innovative in-house developers. Mr. Speaker, therefore, with the budget provision, the Ministry will pursue its commitment towards the digitization of lease records, efficient streamlining process of survey plan, examination and approval. Ministry will also enable chartered approved survey plans to be viewed online via Vanua View platform and scanned plans will be freely available on the Ministry of Lands website. Continuous free access to the Vanua view online and Fiji's land information system through the provision of $150,000 in this budget. Digitization and upgrading of Fiji's geological information with, an improve, with an, a provision of $120,000, Mr. Speaker, which is aimed at updating the geological maps uh, currently with the Mineral Resources Department. In the area of mining, Mr. Speaker, in order to sustainably develop Fiji's mineral potential, a provision of 1.02 million has been allocated, an increase of $128,000 from last year's budget. Mr. Speaker, this provision is to fund mining-related policies, provide validated information for our mining investors, monitoring of mining activities, and sustainably facilitating the exploration and development of the mineral and petroleum resources of the country. The Mining Division, Mr. Speaker, currently monitors seven mining leases, 35 exploration licenses, and 38 quarries. Mr. Speaker, in order to ensure sustainable extraction of sand and gravel and other stones from rivers, an allocation of 62,000 has now been given for the baseline survey of potential river aggregate sites. This item was asked many times during the Fiji First Government in the past, but was turned down. With this budget, we will be able to get this baseline survey organized so we can track usage and stock against the baseline environmental concerns for rivers back retention across the country. With the government's commitment, Mr. Speaker, to providing access to clean water as a fundamental right of every Fijian, a total of $3.5 million has been allocated for groundwater assessment and development for large and smaller islands. This, Mr. Speaker, represents almost an addition of $1 million from the previous budget, and this will enable the ministry to do more for the red zone areas of our island home. It is to be noted, Mr. Speaker, that there are some communities who still depend on rainwater, harvesting system, and hand dug wells which get worse during the drought. With the mineral exploration ge ge geological mapping, Mr. Speaker, uh, in this year's budget there is provision for the purchase of a vessel for mineral exploration and geological mapping within Fiji waters, including coastal assessments and surveys for vulnerable communities. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to revenue collection, I'm happy to report that the Ministry, up to this month, has collected a revenue of $21.2 million, which is an increase of $2.3 million for the same period last year. With the provision of all the services provided by the Ministry, we will continue in our effort in the collection of revenue and arrears through processes that are mandated by law. Effective from the 1st of August 2023, VAT will increase from 9% to 15%, and so we take this opportunity in this national address to encourage those who still owe leases to pay before or on the 31st of July of 2023. Mr. Speaker, to assist in the diversification of the economy and income generation for rural Fijians and commercial agriculture investment, we will continue to focus on maintaining as much good agricultural land as possible. There is also an allocation in that respect of 123,000 for the land use master plan. 
Disaster Management and Resilience, Mr. Speaker, we have an allocation of $12,000 that would allow us, Government of Fiji, to co-share with satellite laser provider Intelsat based in Washington to monitor seismic activities and its operations so that we can update our NDMO operations here in Fiji. Mr. Speaker, uh, the allocation of $80,000 will also fund the initiative as the expert of knowledge and skill set which is significantly assisted or is of assistance to areas such as Tambawata Village in Madhuwata Landslip which resulted in cracks on the ground, houses, and affects the livelihood of uh, those in that area. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry will also continue its work in mon monitoring the sustainable use of our natural resources through foreshore development activities, tracking down of illegal land subdivision, monitoring sand and gravel extraction, groundwater extraction rates and use, illegal land dealings and forms of land use, exploration, quarrying and mining operation. Mr. Speaker, before I resume my seat, let us look at some real cooked up numbers of the past. Honorable Alvig Maharaj talked about that in his speech today. I mean, Mr. Speaker, the real cooked up numbers from 2015 to 2022. In summary, Mr. Speaker, from 2015 to 2022, 2023 budget, the revised budget was $34 million, 662 sorry, $34 billion, $662,841,621.41. Over $34 billion. That was budgeted, revised by the Fiji First Government from 2015, 2022, 2023. How much did they spend, which was the actual? $29 billion. 823 million, 378,206 dollars 67 cents. What was the variance? Mr. Speaker, four billion dollars, 839 million, 463, 414 dollars 74 cents. So to the people of Fiji, from 2015 to 2022 to 2023 budget, hear it in this parliament today. You got shortchanged by the Fiji First Government by a whooping $4 billion, 839 million, 463,414 dollars, 74 cents by your own estimates. The Honorable John Eustumate wanted a budget for the people of Fiji, a real budget from this budget. Well, they fell short. They fell short, Mr. Speaker, big time, from 2015 to 2022-2023, by a whopping close to $5 billion of what they budgeted for. They enticed the people of Fiji that they will spend, and yet they didn't come up to the mark because their revenue collection was up in the sky and speculative. They had pulled wool over our eyes for all these years about what they wanted to do, Mr. Speaker, and at the same breath, such changed the people of Fiji by close to $5 billion, $5 billion in their budget from 2015 to last year. They're trying to ask us how we're going to come up with $680 million. People of Fiji are supposed to be asking you how you budgeted for your budget over these years and failed to deliver on $5 billion of what you budgeted for. <laughs> to conclude, Mr. Speaker, I support the budget that was presented by the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister 
after a very long time, Mr. Speaker, in a timely manner in this House on the 30th of June 2023. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Filimoni uh, Wasarongo for your contribution. And uh, honorable members, I now call upon the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance and Strategic Planning, National Development and Statistics, the Honorable Professor Biman Rosar, to give his right of reply. Just before he takes the floor, I would like to remind you, honorable members, that he will be not limited in his uh, time of uh, right of reply, as this was approved in the business committee. Thank honorable you. Deputy Prime Minister, the floor is yours. Yep. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to especially